couple of years ago, I was hanging around with some friends. The topic of traveling came up, and I offhandedly mentioned that one time, as my family was crossing the border to America, we were stopped and had to wait a couple hours. I was wondering why, when a friend answered the question for me, it's because you look suspicious. That made me feel odd. It made me feel as though me looking differently or acting differently was not okay, and it made me think about something we'd learned in school that day: residential schools. The people we have come to know as Indigenous lived around the land now called Canada for centuries. They hunted and gathered, living off of natural resources and supporting each other in their various bands and tribes. In the 15th and 16th centuries. Explorers like the infamous Christopher Columbus and Samuel de Champlain started flooding into the rich and resourceful land. It was the dreamland. There was only one problem for them: it was already inhabited. Now, this wasn't all bad. The indigenous tribes already residing in the area actually helped the settlers and explorers, teaching them how to live in the rough climates. Many alliances were made, and trades were put into action. But it didn't take long before the settlers overpowered the indigenous tribes, forcing them into areas of land called reserves. And in an effort to snuff out the spread of indigenous cultures, the settlers, under the leadership of Premier, Premier John Macdonald, created church-funded residential schools in the late 1800s, where indigenous children were later forced to learn the ways of the white man. As of 1920. Attendance was mandatory, as shown in the Indian Act on screen. Residential schools were cruel and abusive environments, where children were torn from their families and their cultures, forced to assimilate to the ideal European standard, their identity stripped away from them as they learned to be less savage. Survivors of St. Anne's Residential School recount punishment that included being shocked by a homemade electric chair or being put in a straitjacket. Children were fed low-quality food in measly portions. Some schools even going far enough to force feed their students rancid horse meat and spoiled fish. In the 1950s, Cecilia Jeffrey Residential School used experimental drugs to treat students' ear infections. The children were even made to do their own medical procedures, as shown in the medical report on screen. An investigation. Estimated that 50 percent of children sent to Duck Lake residential schools died. Residential schools systematically cut off any chance of the indigenous culture spreading by cutting off its bloodlines. When I learned all of this, I was shocked. It seemed clear to me that the end of so many rich cultures and ways of life was our society forming itself around the idea that one culture, one religion. One way of being was inherently better than the others, and sadly, that idea still exists today. I struggled for a long time with the idea of wearing a headscarf. I didn't see it as a symbol of religion or culture. I saw it as something that would make me look different, something that would make me look suspicious. But why did I feel that way? Well, it was hard for me. I wanted so badly to be like everyone else. I felt that there was a standard I had to achieve, a level of whiteness I needed to perfect. It was as though everyone was built from the same mold, and I just wanted to fit it. I gawked at anything different, at anyone willing to change the tides and be themselves. I judged everyone whom I thought was too out there, too unique. I couldn't become one of them, an outsider, so I denied myself instead. I thought of myself as less than, not enough. Now you may be thinking, "Wow, how dare she compare the cultural genocide that killed thousands of children to stares she gets in the mall or hurtful offhand comment a friend makes?" But I am in no way belittling residential schools or the lasting effects they caused to Canada. They were, in fact, cruel and abusive environments where children were neglected and starved. As survivor Basil Ambers. Who attended St. Michael's Residential School puts it, "There was no such thing as love." So, how does all of that relate back to today, 
And how can we better understand how to treat others and their cultures by looking at residential schools? Well, the idea that one culture is better than others has been around for centuries. And while residential schools are one example, we can also look at the slave trade, the Holocaust, or any example of supremacy over one culture to get the impression of how these ideals have twisted our history. I believe our tendency to force assimilation cuts us off from cultural richness and leaves us with an emptiness. Even though these schools don't exist today, the ideas that led to them in the first place still exist inside of us. And if those ideas led to residential schools in the past, couldn't something like that happen again? Imagine how much more enriched Canada would be if these schools never happened. Maybe we would keep aspects of the hunting and gathering lifestyle, reducing our carbon footprint by being more in tune with the land we live on. There might be more people living in harsher climates of the country, leading to less strain on resources in densely populated areas. Maybe the makeup of our country would be more diverse, with more encouragement to be true to oneself. And maybe, just maybe, I would have seen my headscarf as a beautiful way of honoring my heritage, instead of something that would isolate me from my peers. The truth is, when you refuse the mold and be yourself, you become more than. We need to challenge the idea of normal, so that we can come into ourselves and be better because of it. We can better do this by remembering residential schools. They were the death of over 4,200 children. But what does that loss mean? How many loved family members lost a loved one? What cultural richness did Canada lose? Are we willing to, to let a loss like that happen again? Or can we commit to doing better? I believe we can do more. We can change the tides. There are simple ways we can acknowledge the dark truth of our country's past, and not just residential schools. We can learn a bit more about the land we're on, acknowledge the people that came before us. By educating others and ourselves, we can spread the word and make a difference, instead of denying what has already happened. Now picture a world where residential schools never existed. I picture a better, richer world where we are not afraid to go out for the glares and comments we may attract. A world where everyone is different, everyone is unique. A world of peace and acceptance. A world that we can still create. Thank you.